previously on Tabletop, my friends Chris Hardwick, Sam Whitworth, Kevin Sussman, and Chris Premis came over to play the Dragon Age RPG. Here's what happened. On the road outside of Greenthorn, the four of us fought and defeated a pair of nasty darkspawn shrieks, which led us to believe that maybe the fifth blight is really happening. Then when we arrived at our destination, we discovered that the entire village of Greenthorn had been killed or ran away because a whole bunch of skeletons and nasty undead things had spilled out of a creepy old tower, which had mysteriously appeared on a hill above the village just a few days prior to our arrival. When we last saw our heroes, we were standing outside the tower, waiting to go inside. What's on the other side of the tower door? You're about to find out as Dragon Age concludes. This is an example of a classic pen and paper role-playing game that lets players explore the world of Thetis from Bioware's award-winning Dragon Age Origins and Dragon Age 2. There are three things you need to know. One, we are Grey Wardens in the land of Ferelden. The second thing you need to know is that whenever we have to resolve a conflict, we will roll three dice. If we roll doubles on these dice, we will get to do something called a stunt. Just how cool that stunt is, is determined by the dragon die. The last thing you need to know, I love this game. It is awesome. Everything we need to know about our characters is on two pieces of paper. We're doing this old school. No minis, no maps. Everything happens in our imagination. Get ready for Dragon Age. My name is Kevin Sussman. I, I sometimes am on that show, uh, The Big Bang Theory. My name is Chris Hardwick. I run a thing called Nerdist. I host shows and I do stand-up comedy. I'm Sam Whitwer and I'm an actor. I am uh, starring in a show called Being Human. My name is Chris Premis. I'm a game designer, writer, and publisher, and I designed the Dragon Age tabletop role-playing game, which we are playing today. So we've been standing around at the base of this tower for two weeks waiting for you. I'm so glad you finally came back to join us. Uh, I guess we can go ahead and, and keep going, guys. We had to listen to so many boring stories so, in that two weeks. They were awesome stories. Oh. This reminds me of when we were playing before. Oh, Arcane Lance to the face. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been gaming for almost 30 years just because I like to roll dice. I like to tell stories. Just so I'm clear, we're standing at the base of this tower. Yeah, there is a front door. It's a you know, big, uh, large wooden door reinforced. I think we should walk up to the door to the tower. No, well, I see no reason not to do that. Would you like to cast rock armor now? I would actually like to cast rock armor now because that'll la that'll last me for an hour. So um, what do I need to? Okay, for that's ten right there. Okay. And, and how does that look again? Oh, cast uh, cast rock armor. Rock armor! <laughs> right afterward, the effect comes right. I'm gonna just make a perception check to see if I can if I can see anything uh, around or hear something through that door. But no, you know what? Screw that. I'm opening the door. Oh my God. I'm that kind of dwarf. That's the way I do things. All right. I've been around. Listen, get get busy breaking down doors or get busy telling stories. Break down door. the door. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I'm just gonna go up and push on the door. Does it do anything? Um. So it opens out. But All right, so I do. I stand there like Midvale School for the Gifted. Yeah. Okay, right. just oh, okay. So what they taught you in Dwarf School is you don't want the front of your keep to open in. Right, it makes yeah. it easier oh, yeah. on the battering rams. Yeah. Oh, okay. So uh, with my non mace hand, yeah. I pull on the door. What does it do? It opens. All right. All right. So I pull the door open and I look inside. Okay, so you see a corridor, and then it ends in another door. You did okay. such a good job with the first door, I think yep. you should tackle yeah. the Good, here door. I go. Oh, I actually don't know what, what we're going to find, actually. I'm, I'm damned curious as to what we're gonna find. I think the tower's been here the whole time. I think the tower has been cloaked in magic, and just no one knew it was there. I look at the hinges of the door to see if it opens inward or outward, but I make sure that they don't see what I'm doing, and then I push it or pull it as is appropriate. You pull it. Yeah, so I pull it, uh, I pull it open, and what do I see? 
There are um, what look like to have been barricades that uh -huh. were destroyed, uh -huh. and there's also like shields, like you know, split shields and things uh, that are. Can we tell what the barricades were set up to protect? Yeah, which direction? like which direction they were set up to protect? Uh, the door to your right. I think that's the door we should go through. That door was clearly important to or them. Or should we split up and? It, it... Oh, let's split the party. Let's definitely. Splitting the party is a great idea. Gonna... That never ends badly for anyone. Yeah. Clearly, a number of Greenthorn villagers died protecting that door. Something matters behind that door. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I want to go back there and roll a lot of ones finding out what it is. Well, I don't know what this rolling thing is you're speaking of, but I think we should do it. Well, it's a dwarf thing. It's a understand. dwarf thing. I thought everyone would be running out of the tower, but it actually looks like they ran in to the tower. I don't know what we're going to find the higher we climb. When we get to the top of the tower, I think we're going to find Gorik telling another story. I make a show of not looking at the hinges, and I just kick that in. Okay, you kick the door open. Yeah, now what now happens? Okay, so uh, there is a pretty large chamber before you. You guess it was once a barracks for soldiers. To your left, there is a stairway that goes up. Uh -huh. There are um, uh, functional barricades that are arrayed around the stairs. Uh -huh. On the Behind those barricades, you see two um, skeletons. There is a um, skeleton that it looks like was nailed to the wall with a sword, um, and uh, there is a piece of parchment nailed to the front of the corpse. So yeah. there's two skeletons with, with bows behind barricades, uh -huh. and then there's two other Wait, skeletons. Wait, are, they, are uh -huh. they standing? Are they able to? Yeah. Oh, they're, they're, they are. They're like attacky like skeletons. Around. Yeah, okay. Oh, they're right. moving? Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> All right, it's on. Do yeah, we need to roll initiative? Yeah. So the skeletons uh, actually open. win initiative. Oh so, wow, we lost initiative to skeletons. Skeletons are actually pretty easy, especially for a guy like me with a mace. Their bones are very susceptible to macing. Okay, so Will, yeah. you are going to take. Let's see. It's always bad when he's got to go. Let's see. I know. Let's see. He's like, hold on, I can't add this high. I need a. I need a graphing calculator. <laughs> <gasps> yeah, uh, you're gonna take seven points of damage. Seven. Oh, but my armor soaks two. I mean, soaks five, so I only take two. That's not bad. Uh, and then you're good. you're good. I rolled a oh. one, so the second one's not gonna punch through your armor. Hey. Oh, what was that? Yeah, <laughs> nothing. Uh, so you're gonna get a throwing spear at you, uh, which is gonna do twelve points of damage. Uh, Goodness, because he did a mighty blow. Okay, so effect. seven gets through. Yeah. Um, and then the other one, he's going to do a dual yeah, strike. Yeah. This throwing spear is going to uh, punch through you and into one of you. So, <laughs> let's wow. see. Right through the cheek. Uh, yeah. Through the cheek. No, I don't think that's going to happen. It's you. Mother <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you are going to take uh, eh, seven points of damage. Okay, uh, you are going to take eight points of damage. I don't so have a lot right. of health left. Well, you have, but you have rock armor on. You have rock yeah. armor oh yeah, that's on. right. That's so, right. So, um, so that's only four. I get, so. so you only take four damage. Okay, right. Yeah. yeah that's right. Okay, so well, then uh, armor, Keegan, it is your game. okay. All right, watch this stunt action. Oh. I mean, I'm in there. I'm mixing it up, but I'm not stunting. Uh, my ability to stunt is is stunted. Fifteen. Okay, that's a hit. Oh, nice. What? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, good job. Yeah. These uh, skeletons are not nearly as lithe and as the, quick as the shrieks. Right. Let's do one of those. Oh, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Sixteen damage on one of the uh, bowmen. Hey, oh, all right. Um, so you crunch into this thing, and and bits of bone just fly everywhere, and it is barely being held together by whatever. You but know, it's still up. Uh -huh. It is still up. Man, that's a tough skeleton. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna fire Winter's Grasp at the ones in the middle of the room okay. to try to take care of them. Yeah. Um, okay, so six, 12. Okay, so I, I hit it. Winter's Grasp is a single target. It's not a. <laughs> oh, I thought they were in a. In a I thought but they were... Flame Blast yeah. is eight yards long and two yards wide. But I, are they they might enough? be. Are they, are they within eight yards? Uh, you could move so that you could catch both of them. As, as my minor? Yeah. Okay, um, all right, so I move within range and then cast Flame Blast, yep. which is a 12, which I need to get, which I rolled. Okay. 
Uh, so they will each take 2d6 plus 1 damage. Not bad. So you just get 5, so that's uh, 6 on one. Okay. And 10 on the other. Wow, nice. Chris is a great spellcaster. I usually play magic users. Chris is the magic user. Chris is doing all the damage. Uh, Gorik. <laughs> <laughs> Double ones! Wow. <laughs> you stunted. Well, you only need a 12, Will. Can you hit a 12? Gosh, I don't know. Let's find out. Yeah, that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, but the charge makes it 12. All right. oh. And I stunted? Yeah. And I get forced, and I get four stunt points. Yes, sir. I don't know how the f that happened. That's pretty cool. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and dual strike these guys on account of them being right next to each other. Okay. Will's dice rolling is getting a little bit better, but he still is hitting ones every time. Which is, you know, if you can get two high rolls, like the one's not the biggest deal in the world, but still, there is something weird and mystical happening with his dice rolling. You crunch through the one that was almost dead, falls to pieces, and yeah. then slam into the other one, and uh, and you know, bone flies and chunks of armor fall off. Uh, so thinly. Okay. Not quite enraged. But getting there. <laughs> but you're I'm getting kind of there. Irritated. You aren't <laughs> yeah. irritated. Then. Are you sure you're not enraged? <laughs> wow. All right, Thirteen so plus hit. attack bonus. Yeah. You Good certainly destroy. hit, and then you you get uh, three stunt points as well. Ooh, lightning attack. Yeah, I think lightning attack. I'm gonna make a second attack against the enemy. Okay. Maybe after the first attack, I'll be even more enraged. That could be. Let's see what happens. Yeah. I hope you're more enraged. <laughs> you're peeved. Uh, it, plus five, it's two plus five. Okay, <clears throat> seven, yep. And then make a second attack. Make my I'm bloody. <laughs> 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 Look at how 11. mad he was! An 11! Ah. All right, so yeah, you know, like, you whack into him and then kind of spin around and just take the head off the skeleton. I'm mm. in one of my moods. You are. <laughs> <laughs> he gets You're this like, way. I love Kevin's character. I love his rage. I love his crippled arm. And he's never done this before, so that's kind of fun to see him going through this for the first time. So we get those two guys down? <laughs> yes. Done. All right, go team us! Yeah. There's only two left. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I'm going to attack you, Sam. And so they miss uh, both of you, and then it is your turn to go. All right. 7, 13. Yeah, plus uh, five. Yep. For, I, I didn't even aim. Look at that, look at what you're doing right now. Attempt. Yeah. Wow, yeah. 11, 14, plus 17. 17. Yeah. So yeah, you basically just split these bones right down the middle and they nice. fall apart yeah. to either side. He had to split. <laughs> <laughs> no! I, will, I will fire my arcane lance at the one remaining skeleton. Oh, that's wow. a stunt. Wow, that is that's a that's super 17 stunt. 17 plus... Uh, five yeah. stunt points. So I got five stunt points. Okay, so I'll skirmish, knock him prone, and then cast Mighty Blow on him. All right, very good. So the Mighty Blow gives you an extra d6 damage, so... Uh, Two d6. Okay, so 11? Yeah, 11. Okay, so yeah, you, uh, you blast it and it falls to pieces. Hey. So they are all, <laughs> they have all been slain. Nice. I honestly thought that the tower was gonna kick our ass, especially the way I've been rolling today. Felt pretty good to get in there and beat the shit out of those skeletons. Let's go read that sign. That's the read the sign that's stabbed through with a dagger to see what it says. I like those signs. That's those kind of those bad. things are kind of cool. All right. Woo, hand It's out. in an envelope. <laughs> I, I totally did not expect to be handed a slip of paper. And what made it even better is that it was in an envelope. <laughs> to those who survive. Maybe I... someone else would like to read it. <laughs> <clears throat> you guys, this reminds me of a time... That you're about to read this? To those who survive, as Queen Moira commanded, I led a sortie against the Orlesians who came to kill her, and so end the rebellion. The idea of the tower is that it was besieged by Orlesians 50 years ago. So when the players enter the tower, they are seeing the remnants of that battle from 50 years ago that's been hidden away in the Fade for all this time. Long live Ferelden, Sir Victor Greenthorn. P.S. Gorg Dunharg is the greatest storyteller that the ever lived. You're adding the No, it's that. what it says right, right here. Also, Fonzer's kind a of a 
Really respectful. Really respectful. My character's of that illiterate, guy. but I can tell you that's not what it says. <laughs> so they think, ah, uh, everybody says this about the Great Wardens. They say that we're rebels and then we're coming to kill the Queen. And then it's well, then they do that stuff. And then they drove them back into the thing and they're in the tower and they're making their stand in the tower. Did any of that make sense no, to anyone? No, not at all. Try it again. <laughs> what, what happened? Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> what do the words it, smell like? He can read it by smelling it. Touch of vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> the smelling of the letters was not very helpful. But it's nice to have a thing <laughs> to smell. Whoever the first person that got killed was, was a very good smelling uh, warrior. So you know that Queen Moira uh, was the mother of King Merrick. Merrick is the father of the current king, okay. Caelan. Um, she is known as the Rebel Queen. Um, during the Orlesian occupation, she led the resistance against the Orlesians, and eventually she was betrayed and murdered, and then it was up to her son, Merrick, to finally rally everyone and kick the Orlesians out. Okay. But someone talking about Queen Moira dates that to 40 to 50 years ago. It feels like a weird ghost tower that has been there, that was there at one point, and then maybe just through some weird time rift. This tower, this whole area just stinks of magic and the fade so much that it may be possible that this spent time in the fade. When we get to the top of the tower, I think we're gonna find the Rebel Queen. I do not think she's dead. I don't know why, but I just feel like she's up there just waiting to be discovered. Whatever put this tower here, I have a strong feeling it's the top of this tower. Well. Yeah, let's make sure that we don't go back to the Fade in this damn thing. What if it goes back? If we're destined to go to the Fade, then to the Fade we shall go. F*** yourself. Yeah, Jesus, I'm not going to the Fade. Seriously, f*** you. <laughs> <laughs> I go and look at the next door, and then push or pull in. <laughs> Alone. <laughs> Alone. Struggling his beard, beard for himself, yes. not yes. even for anyone else. So you open the door, um, and uh, this room is like a 60 by 60 square. Um, in the middle of it are four crowns that look like they're made of steel. Um, and then flanking the table on either side are four statues. So eight statues total, four per side. Can you yeah. describe the statues? I mean, are they, yes. are they armed in their statue way? Are they statues of guys with swords or? Uh, the subject of each statue seems to be the same person. It is a woman. Um, it seems to be Queen Moira, the rebel queen. At the foot of each statue, um, there is a single word. And so uh, the statues are labeled beauteous, compassionate, glorious, mighty, righteous, steadfast, Whimsical and wise. Righteous, steadfast. And then what? Whimsical, whimsical and whimsical wise. Whimsical and wise. You missed a mighty. Where's the mighty go? In between glorious and righteous. Of course it does. I was testing you. What the f was he talking about? <laughs> the other thing that you notice uh, across the room is there's like a battle axe sunk into the wall, and there's another piece of parchment. I like notes. Mm -hmm. To those who survive, the fury of our sortie infuriated the Orlesians. They are not used to those who stand and fight. From what we've seen from on high, the Orlesian army remains in the valley. They must believe that Queen Moira is still here. I hope this means she made good her escape. The flame of rebellion must burn until we are free. For Ferelden, Sir Victor Greenthorn. P.S. If you ever have the good fortune of sitting at the foot of Gorik Dunhog they as he tells you a story, he did not add say that. thank you and listen, for That's truly adamant. yours is a good day. They don't even, they don't use P.S.'s. So, this means that, that Queen Moira, Moira, with all these statues, <clears throat> I wonder if one of the statues is Queen Moira like in statue form. It could be. And the other ones are actually just like statues. My guess is that if we put if we put the crowns on the right heads, one of them comes to life. So the idea is she has four of these eight traits. Usually when you run into a puzzle like this, if you do it wrong, you get like shocked or uh, blasted with flame or turned into a newt. Can I uh, make a cunning check to see if I remember anything about putting crowns on stat? Is there any sort of magic that... <laughs> there, must be a ma there must be a thing, right? Um, 
Yeah, you can make a roll. It is really fun to watch the players interact with the story that I've come up with, and uh, particularly when they, they get really involved in it, and I have to, on the fly, come up with reactions. There are, are things in the history books that are sort of like this, but you don't know, you haven't read about this in particular. Can, we make, can I make a guess with the crowns? I think I'm ready to solve the puzzle, <laughs> <laughs> um, I say, I, I think we should put a crown on mighty, righteous, steadfast, and wise. wise. Okay, uh, so you put crowns on those heads and nothing seems to happen. Um, maybe switch something for compassionate. All right, how about switch Righteous for Compassionate? Let's try it. No go. Let's put it back on Righteous. Switch, uh, what, was, what were the ones we... Mighty, Righteous, Steadfast, and Wise. Let's take them all off and only put one on Steadfast and see if that does anything. Okay. Okay. Okay, nothing happens. Let's go with um, Compassionate, Righteous, Steadfast, and Wise. A fine choice. My stupid flat-topped, mulleted character stepped up and delivered the solution to the group. The crowns sort of light up and then uh, stairs appear on the other side of the room leading up to a door. I want to uh, watch the stairs and take off one of the crowns, see if the stairs stay or, or remain. Um, they disappear. Interesting. Okay. I want to take the crown and do this. Oh. <laughs> You're still a virgin. <laughs> yes, I'm a virgin. I'm a 70-year-old virgin. I killed living Before we get to the top door of the tower, I just got to tell you guys that I was in a tower like this once. And when we got to the door that was at the top of the tower and we opened it up on the other side. With a two-handed axe, is it possible to like chop yourself, get a good hit in, or is that, <laughs> is that impossible? It's totally possible. to see if I can yeah. cast rock armor over my ears. <laughs> I would guess that there is a huge combat coming at the end. It's going to be some kind of magical guy or magical thing. I mean, if it's just like crammed with dark spawn, we're dead. I'm fairly convinced the Nazis are behind it. And I cannot wait to fight the Triceratops. All right, so you guys have come up to the final door mm -hmm. and uh, you pull it open. Mm -hmm. And inside you see another 60 by 60 chamber. Yay! Um, in the center of the room, there's like a raised dais mm -hmm. and there are two um, chairs on it. Okay. In one of the chairs, there is a live person who is manacled to it, um, and he is wearing, you know, chain mail and traveling clothes, basically. Um, looks like he has been um, beaten and, uh, you know, roughed up. And then next to him, in the next chair, um, is a dead person wearing plate armor. Uh, it's just a skeleton, a, not a moving skeleton. The armor uh, has uh, like a th like a thorn pattern engraved into it, mm -hmm. um, and then behind the two chairs facing you, there is like a ghostly figure who is wearing that same armor. Um, very severe look on his face, bearded. I haven't dealt with the magic stuff yet, you know. Uh, nobody has hurled any kind of magic ball at me. When you open the door, he says. You've come at last. I knew this sword lesion was a filthy liar like all of his kind. You guys, it's the ghost of... Sir oh Victor God. Greenthorn? That's the one. You think it's him? Yep, and I think that he probably captured the Grey Warden. That's probably Aldric, Ald Aldric LePont, because he's from Orlay. I don't know who you think we are, um, but uh, all we wish is to Rescue our friend, if indeed you are Ulrich, and leave in peace. I think that you are the Lickspittle lackeys of this Orlesian dog. Slaps the guy with his ghostly armored gauntlet. You say oh, what a yeah. I am rolling like absolute Mumbari Warhound shit. I'm not gonna try to fight this guy. I'm gonna try to trick him. I say to him, Queen Moira sent us. Did she? At last. 
I pull out uh, one of these messages that doesn't have any extra things written on it about me. <laughs> and I say, the queen is pleased that Sir Victor has followed her command so well thus far. It would be a tragedy if he were to fail in his final duty. Yeah. <laughs> So he puts his hands on the shoulder of the skeleton. Oh, that's and, good. And he says, Sir Victor did not fail in his duty. The queen ordered him to hold off the Orlesian horde so she could escape. And he did that. And then he could have found his own way out or escaped or surrendered for honorable terms. But Sir Victor Greenthorne had a greater sense of duty, and he fought them, and he drew them in, and he let them besiege his tower, and he watched all of his men be cut down one after another, and then ultimately gave his life when an Orlesian Chevalier slew him in single combat where we stand. Oh, that Victor Greenthorne. As it turns out, he has a twin brother that he doesn't, and as I say that, I just charge the ghost with my mace. Because <laughs> I'm not talking us out of this. It's like in uh, the military, they say, no plan survives first contact with the enemy. That is totally the way running adventures is for role-playing games. So you run up to him with yeah. your mace. Yeah. And he sort of melts away and you can hear his voice now, like, echoing inside this chamber. Okay. And he says, I was watching Sir Victor Greenthorne when he met his end. I am a spirit from the Fade. They call me Duty. <laughs> Duty. I was moved by Sir Victor's dedication to his queen and to his country and to his duty. Duty. So when the Orlesians were going to destroy this tower, I pulled it to me. And since then, I have watched this valley and kept it safe. And then this man returns here bearing Sir Victor's sword from Orlais. Now what am I to believe? There is a greater evil in this world than Orlais ever was. Oh, yes. We're, yeah, we're heading right into the fifth blight. I don't know if you've been paying attention to current events, but this is a bad situation. So if you'll let us take this man, then you will have been serving not only the greater good, but also your masters of old. So come on. Dude. Everyone dies come if on, we don't dude. take him with <laughs> us. Everyone. It seems so long that I've been watching this valley, watching for the signs, waiting for the queen to return. But she has never come. Yeah, about that. <laughs> and that whole queen thing? You take this one. I thought I was gonna get hit by a magic ball, but instead I got hit with a magic riddle and I wasn't ready for it. Um, she's Are doing you? fine, right? It is more. entirely accurate to say that the queen rests comfortably. <laughs> <laughs> Do you consider yourselves truthful men? Oh. Okay, okay. She's okay. dead, right. okay? Look, She's it's dead. been a long time. We've been... She's dead. We have a whole different battle that we're trying to win. She was a now. compassionate, righteous, steadfast, and wise ruler, but her time is done. That's right. Nice. You like that? Mm. Yeah. Her life has come to a natural conclusion, and, uh, and it may be time for you to move on as well. Then you say that Ferelden is free. It is. Ferelden, Ferelden is free, but perhaps the world is imperiled. Run to the light. <laughs> Come up onto the dais. Okay. Okay, so you guys link hands with him, and uh, you can Who's feed... actually touching the ghost hands? Uh, I think I'm touching a ghost hand. Yeah. No, it's awesome. You don't even know. It's like touching a nine volt battery with your tongue, but with your whole body. Let him smell your finger. <laughs> <laughs> I can already smell his finger. <laughs> So we join hands and you can feel uh, the power of magic, essentially the fade coursing through you. 
and uh, you've got this sensation of like leaving your bodies, you know, and uh, your point of view is suddenly above the tower and then you're zooming off and, uh, you know, you're soaring over Ferelden very, very quickly, giving you vertigo. You find yourself above the streets of uh, Denerim and you can see uh, King Kalen is giving a speech to people in one of the great squares of the city. And then you move on and you head south and south towards the Korkari Wilds. And then as you skim over the top of the swamp in the wilds, you can see teeming there. You can see Darkspawn. Ogres, Genlocks, Herlocks. And you bank and zoom back to the tower and then you feel that magic being pulled out of your body and then you're yourselves again. And he says, it is true. My sojourn must end. (laughs) So uh, duty uh, begins to dissipate um, and uh, he says, be strong for Ferelden and for Thedas disappears, returns to the fade. You know, just, just talking ghosts to the afterlife. Another day at the office. What did it smell like? Like duty. <laughs> uh, oh, you guys. Okay, okay, so, so, we, so, we, so, we, so we pick him up, yeah. right? And, yeah. and, uh, and we help him down. Are we uh, walking out of the tower? Yes, so the tower okay. stays. Um, okay. It does not go back into the fade. Uh-huh. So what, well, look, what you're happens? the Grey Warden, we're just the recruits. Yes. Well, we need to go find Duncan. We need to go, we need to travel to the Lake Callanhead docks to, to meet with Duncan. Yes. Uh, and, and tell him what we've seen. Tell him that we've seen that the blight is coming. Big time. Well, let's go. Great. Here we Done. go. I'm ready to leave this town. Let's and go. so are we. <laughs> Montage! <laughs> <laughs> so now you know the blight is real. You know that, uh, that your duty will be arduous, but you move ahead on another day. And that's the adventure. The really interesting thing is what happened afterward. I mean, because my character, you know, having come back from a successful mission, he, uh, he went back to his hometown, asked out the girl that he always wanted to ask out because he spent a lot of time with, and really one night the mullet took over. He said some things he gr- regretted and then fast forward to the custody battle. So that's almost like, yeah, well, there was a sea nymph, but I didn't touch her. I get it. It's confusing. Well, thanks for watching Tabletop. I'm Will Wheaton. Eat poison and go (laughs) yourself. (laughs) Ouch. What, is that how you know? No, that's it. He's got it. That's great. We're done. Thanks. (laughs) Well, thanks for playing, everyone. I hope you had fun. Thank Thank you you so much. (laughs) That was pretty cool. And I kind of want to know what happens to all of our characters next. I want to say a very special thank you to Sam Whitwer, Chris Hardwick, Kevin Sussman, and especially to Chris Premis, who wrote and ran this adventure for us today. In fact, if you would like to play this adventure with your group, you can download it right here. Now, I am going to go practice rolling dice, and I will see you next time on Tabletop. Sure, now I roll a 15. We're rebels, and then we're coming to kill the queen, and then it's well, then they do that stuff, and then they drove them back into the thing, and they're in the tower, and they're making their stand in the tower. <laughs>